So what are we doing on this quite windy day? Today is rookie error day. <laughs> so um, yes, in the middle of the night, someone. Someone, we're not gonna say who. Wanted their fantastic fan opened. And we opened it and there was a super strong wind coming this way. The wrong way. The wrong way, caught it like a sail. Slammed it back. Slammed it back, smashed all the connections where the it, raising but arm. But they're plastic, so they're, they're pretty weak in the begin with. Right, and so yeah, it's all smashed, flap. We duct taped it that night. Cindy got her little hands in between the fan blades and duct taped it. Yeah. And uh, now we're going to affect hopefully a quick little fix. Well, we wanted to buy a new <clears throat> cover, but they're on back order from Amazon. Yeah, so we're gonna have to do something different. And a learning point is why you should have the collapsible ladder. And this is what I use to get up on the roof. If you want to check out how I get up on the roof, you can check out this video here. It is actually the first Love Subbing video ever made. And Official it, Love Subbing video. Right. And it goes up on, um, shows how I get up on the roof, but you can see it's like this. And we have a link to all this in our Amazon store. But yeah, I'll show how this collapses down later. <laughs> So how are we gonna do yeah, this so repair? Yeah, so what we're gonna do is we've got super glue, Gorilla super glue. And this is gonna be a temporary repair. Yep. We'll glue this. The bracket. We've got our awesome clamp, which I love. We'll clamp it in, hold it down, then give it a good tug, make sure, it, ooh, plain. Um, make sure it stays, and that'll hopefully be good enough. That's a, that's a big one. So. Let's go ahead and do that. Every Airstreamer should have a ladder. Now, if you've got a regular RV with the ladder on the back with the flat roof, now you probably don't need this. But if you've got an Airstream with no way to get on top, you definitely need one of these. And for this, just the situation, it replaces fantastic fan. So what size ladder is this? This, I think, is the uh, 11 footer, I think. But it just goes up like that. Locks into place. You can go ahead and get up on the airstream. Sweet. Let's see if it works, right? Works? Works. All right. I Very bet good. that fix will last another 20 years as we carry that other fan around. Yeah, absolutely. So back in Melbourne, we lost one of our fantastic fans. We opened it up, rookie error, opened it up like this. The wind was going this way and it, it snapped the- snapped the plastic Plastic holders. fittings. And you can see how that, on this new one that we've ordered. And we got this on Amazon. Yep. It was you like see how 60 bucks. The bracket here, is held in place just by these plastic things here. So if it catches, the it's wind. gonna break those things It'll easily. It'll easily break. So we had a temporary fix, glued it down, but that temporary fix has since departed. So we're going to uh, go ahead and put the uh, brand new one on. So I've got my little cup to keep my screws, my electric drill, the ladder that we carry. Yep. We'll get up on the roof and replace this fan. Stepping on the ribs. This is the one that's broken. So I'm gonna show. You can see where they broke right there. Yep. So now we've got a good one. So you can see what cracked there. And nothing you can do about that. We did have a temporary fix so that when we put it into storage, nothing happened to it, so that's good. We had to wait a couple weeks to get a fantastic fan cover replacement, so we got that on Amazon and it was about $60, but sometimes they're not always in stock. So I think we're done upstairs. So today is fixing things in beautiful places. Often when we're on the road, we have a maintenance day, and so that's what this is, and we're still having trouble with our refrigerator door, and we're just trying to see if this will work. So we've got the glue again, and we're trying a different technique where we're shimming it in from the bottom. 
and seeing if it'll work that way because the last time I don't think the back got glued in place. So we're going to see if that works and we're going to go run some errands while this is drying and see what happens. So we have been looking for a locksmith to do our blanks for us since we left Georgia, since we discovered that we left my Airstream keys back in Vermont. And believe it or not, we actually had spare blanks in our spare parts kit. And we've had those probably for 10 years plus, so and we never needed to use them. So and it, it there's, was, a, there's a great phrase in aviation that says the two most useless things to a pilot are the fuel left at the airport and the altitude above you. And I would have to say that from a key perspective, the most useless thing is to have a blank with no cutting in it. Right. But we never felt the need to have that done, but it was nice to have the blanks there just in case. But we had it done, finally found a place after, what, nine attempts, we went to Lowe's, they wouldn't do it. They did went to Ace, they wouldn't do it. Yeah, went, most of the big box stores will not cut a key if you bring the blanks. They will only cut the key if you buy the blanks from them. And getting Airstream blanks are kind of unique. Well, they're, they're Trimark keys. And so I think it's like all RV keys, but they're a little bit more specific than the ones that they're gonna have at any of the big box, big Home Depot stores. They're gonna be all like house keys and stuff like that. Right. So and by the way, for those people in doing our research that say that every there's only one RV key that opens up every RV, that's wrong. Our research says that there's 50 variations, uh, variations of the Airstream key. So you'll have one of 50 uh, keys for an Airstream. So it's not one of one, it's one of 50. One of 50 of the same type. So, and it also depends on the age of your trailer as well as to what type of key it is as well. We haven't tried these keys yet. They look like they will work and we'll see if they do. All right, let's see if that dude was on his game. Yep. So this is going to be the top key. It'll go in like that. That locked. That locked. This one goes in like that. Sweet. Let's see if it does the reverse. Feels good. All right. Yep. Did we now we have our spare set of keys. We have never been locked out of our Airstream in over 20 years of Airstreaming, but never. it's good to have a safe set anyway. <laughs> so as part of our maintenance day, we're also doing stuff like filling our propane tank, which we ran out of. And um, people often ask, you know, where do you get propane when you're on the road? Well, our go-to is always Ace Hardware because they're around everywhere and they're usually right, you just pull in the back almost always. They'll fill it up. Campgrounds will usually sometimes have one too. Yes, but we're at a county park right now and they will do it. And we'll do it at a campground if we can. But there's but a caveat though. Yes, and so especially for a place like Ace Hardware, uh, campgrounds kind of sort of, but definitely Ace Hardware, they're going to check to make sure your certification date is up to date. And they will not fill a tank that's not certified properly. You can see my I'm on a five year recertification program. so. I'm August of 2018 these were recertified so before August of this year I'm gonna to have to have this tank uh, recertified so, so you gotta make you sure get... you have that sticker if it's more than uh, 10 years old initially and then every five year there uh, 10 or 12 I'm not sure I'll have to look at that I'll leave the link to actually what it is whether it's 10 or 12 from the data manufacturer and then every five years after so where would you get this recertified yeah, excellent question we have a lot of prop like big propane dealerships will um, recertify tanks. That's where we go up in Vermont. You know, our tank was made in August of 2004. So, yeah. So is there a limit for the renewal or nope. will, as long as it looks good? As long as it looks good. They're gonna inspect it well, for rust, but this is aluminum, so there's not gonna be any rust on this, but they're gonna inspect it for any damage, dings. They're gonna make sure that you've got the right uh, over protection device, OPD valve on there. Um, so yeah, full propane, we're good to go. So I have one of these L-shaped brackets that we use to mount like uh, the closet and stuff like that anytime, or I've also used it to reinforce the drawer hinge. So I, we, there's multiple uses for these. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna hack it in half using my hacksaw. We always have a hacksaw. Lube it up a little bit. Why do you lube it up? It, when you're cutting metal, you wanna keep it lubed. I usually, Why? Usually, because of the friction. Oh. It's not like wood, so which is really soft. So I, I usually use three and one oil, but it was buried, so WD-40 will be good enough. So I'm gonna hack this. Will the edge be sharp? Yeah, I can file it down though. I get some files. And then we're gonna use this bracket to reinforce the hinge. Oh, we'll see if that works. We'll see if it works. 
As mentioned before, we would have in preferred the option of getting a new door, but that because it's a 2002 refrigerator, that's not an option. So right. We're going to try to keep this one going as long as possible because as a fridge goes, it's still working great. All right. Be close enough for government work. And what I'm going to do here is bend this to get that to match that angle, that there. angle right there. And it's pretty dang close right there. Good. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Let's see if it works. So in theory, that should hopefully take most of the weight, right? In theory. In theory. You want to tighten it up a little bit it's more? It's tight. It's tight? Yep. Do we want to see if it's going to work? Yep. So we're going to pull out the wedge down there. This should be exciting. We're going to be very gentle with it. Don't let it go. It doesn't seem to be shifting too much. All right. It seemed to work a little bit. I think so. We're going to play around with it and see if it was a valid fix. All right. So that was our it doesn't fix. Look great, it doesn't but... look great. And comment below if you think it'll last. It won't. It won't. We need a new door. We need to find a new door. So comment below if you know where we can find a 2002 four cubic foot Americana Dometic door. So one final maintenance item today is sometimes those little plastic grabber latches stick in the closed position. And they'll get pulled out when they should be. So, so you have to kind of go in there and pry it out. See where ours is in the back there. It's in the closed position. And that's why I've, we implore Airstream to do a better job with their latches. Right. But in the meantime, we'll just open it up. Yep. And usually this happens in the most inconvenient time when we're trying to take off or do stuff. So we're going to fix that. Go ahead. Whoops. Something. I didn't line it up right. So while you're in there, it doesn't hurt to check your rails and make sure that they're secure. And you have to do that. yeah, just sometimes they need to be tightened, and that's something one reason why you may not want to put things that are really, really heavy in your drawer while you travel because those rails can shake loose. So, All right, yep, let's see how it goes. Yep, good job. Well done. So, hey, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up, and if you think we've earned a subscription, click the subscribe and comment below if you've been a, such an idiot to let your fantastic fan blow off because we come out with RV and Airstream related videos just like this one. Every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.